So today I'm going to discuss three films that I've recently watched that deal with the Teutonic Knight Order. So there'll be three different films, of course. Uh, each one is from a different era. And the first film is from the 30s and the other two are from the 60s, although uh, one is from 60 and one from 68. So they're quite spaced out apart. And of course, they're all from different countries. And they all show a different perspective of the knights. But also, uh, there's loads of similar... Uh, kind of views of the night. I kind of contradict myself, but yeah. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, first up, we have the 2005 film Kingdom of Heaven, directed by British auteur Ridley Scott. As we all know, Kingdom of Heaven is the prequel to Moonrise Kingdom, and also that is the sequel to Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Now this film is a fantastic film, uh, representing the Crusades on film, it's perhaps the most important historical film ever made, and it makes for a brilliant coaster. Let's brew some coffee. Mm, we want to get it, we're going to get enough. We, yeah, we want to keep going, yeah, there we go. Oh, ah, sounded like a splash. We're gonna stir that. Mmm. Oh, sugar. Sugar. Ah. Yeah. Oh, let's get a big one. Jesus. Hey! There we go. Can't have too many, otherwise, you get diabetes. Oh, scene selection. Oh, heavenly prizes to be. Oh my god. I could win this TV. Right. See you guys later. So this film was the one I liked the least, but I'm, I'm, I did like them all in in respects. Uh, although for for I it, this was Eisenstein's first sound feature, and I had already seen uh, Ivan the Terrible parts one and two. Um, oh, pardon. And I found this one a bit clunky, and then you can often find that with uh, very early sound films like uh, M or The Blue Angel. So, but that's not to the film's detriment, because it still holds up. It's still a, a very well put together piece, as you'd expect from Eisenstein. <laughs> Obviously, the editing's on point. It's just, it has one of uh, the most extraordinary, extraordinary battle sequences at the end. But I just found it slightly clunky, and then, like, if you look at Napoleon uh, from 1927, like the battle scenes and that, you can't really argue that because it's uh, from 1938. You should forgive it for being a bit clunky. But so I, I, put, I far preferred uh, Ivan the Terrible uh, Part 2. I think that's a masterpiece. And I, I haven't seen uh, Q Viva Mexico yet, so I'm excited to see how that is, but that's kind of unfinished. So, uh, yeah, of course this deals from with the Teutonic Order as strictly the villains, whereas the other two kind of middle, like, the characters, yeah, in the other ones kind of join the Order and then leave it. So there's kind of a similar pattern of the Order uh, portrayed in a negative light, as uh, we see. The next film is Knights of the Teutonic Order from 1960, or also known as Black Cross, because uh, that's also what the Teutonic Order was known as, because they had the infamous Black Cross on their uh, costume, or uniforms, and their armour, that's the right word. Uh, this film is directed by Alexander Ford, who is uh, Polish, so this is a Polish film from 1960, so and this was a, a very hard film to find. I, I had to dig and dig on, on the interwebs and find uh, a copy and, and finding English subtitles that matched was impossible. So I had to watch it with the scene slightly out of sync. So this is the one that I have the least uh, uh, grasp on, I, I'd say, as it was uh, I had to work uh, extra hard just trying to figure out who was saying what and when. As there's a lot, this is the most uh, grandiose of the three and this, <laughs> it's a lot of dialogue, but also a lot of... Uh, a lot of so in this one uh, as we see in the next one as well uh, we have someone join the, the Teutonic Order uh, this time with his uncle and then, and then they leave later on as uh, yeah, he's a uh, task to get free 
items from the order. And again, towards the end, this one has one of the best battle sequences uh, ever put to film. It's up there, you know, with Lawrence of Arabia, some of the stuff in Napoleon. It's definitely worth a mention in history, which is, uh, this was probably, this is the least known of the three films. And again, this is a very sprawling epic. It's uh, about three hours, and I think nearly three hours, just about. So if you can find this one, I'd highly recommend it. I believe it has a second run DVD, which is, I think, might be out of print or not. I'm not sure. I haven't heard the prints the best, but if it's the only copy, yeah, I'd recommend it just to see it. And hopefully they'll put it out on Blu-ray, uh, re-release it like they have uh, other films. So yeah, this one I kind of have the least to say about because <laughs> the subtitles and it's very, yeah, a very, you, you just, you got to experience it. So the last film is the one I love the most. It's directed by Frentisek Vlachil, and it's from 1968, and it's a Czech film, a part of the Czech New Wave. Uh, this was the film he followed up, Marketa Lazarova, which is his masterpiece and one of the greatest films ever made. So yeah, this that was in 67, this is 68, and it is his fourth feature. And it, as I say, this is the one I love the most, and it made the favourites list. And this one, well, if you're not familiar with La Seal's work, uh, you could describe uh, this and Marquetta very influenced by uh, Andre Rublev and, and the early Tarkovsky, and then certainly uh, Bergman with the Seventh Seal. I'm, I'm sure there's not a film that deals with the Crusades that hasn't been influenced by Seventh Seal. So, but at the same time, I don't want to just, this is a, a rip off of this. It, it, he is his own. He's his own man, he's his own artist, and he has his own uh, style, and it's obviously not as plodding and methodical as Tarkovsky in terms of long takes, but it, this this one was much more uh, slow burning than Marquetta, which is like uh, over three hours, and this one is uh, about 90 minutes. So it is interesting to see the, the, the two, and this one, uh, I don't know if I said the title, this is uh, The Valley of the Bees. 1968 and again we have a knight that joins the uh, order this time because uh, his father uh, gets a new bride he, he never we, we don't really know what happened to his mother we assume she's dead he gets a new bride who is like the same age as him obviously these are uh, the crusade times so that was perfectly acceptable and you can see that they kind of have a connection him and his uh, stepmother figure so yeah it was a uh, some uh, psychology, <laughs> psychological uh, stuff you could analyze in it. But of course, they're the same fucking age, so. So then, uh, at the wedding, he kind of acts out and then he <laughs> gets the shit beaten out of him by his father. And then he joins the order and finds his way. And then, uh, through, uh, well, through uh, no, something that wasn't his fault, he uh, has to leave the order, and he returns home to find his mother. That's all, all I'm going to say. I've got to say that these are all uh, going to be spoiler-free, so you should really watch these films for yourself. So yeah, this film was really stunning. Of course, the cinematography and uh, the shot composition is, is breathtaking. Like, he's up there with Kubrick, you know, Bergman, Tarkovsky, uh, Kurosawa, in terms of just the greatest films shot ever. Beautiful cinematography, like, lulling... Uh, wide shots and, and the nature as and normally with uh you hear check new wave you kind of expect the kind of darkly comic witty kind of like uh birds orphan and orphans and fools kinds of, or, or um closely watched trains so it, if you dig deeper in, in the check new wave there's obviously more methodical films and uh, great art films of course and it's one of obviously one of the greatest waves in cinema you know up there with french or you know New Japanese, Taiwanese. So yeah, I absolutely love this film. I, I watched it last night and it is a masterpiece, full blown, one of the greatest films ever made. It doesn't, it, it can't compare to Marketa Lazarova because that is like maybe one of the 50 greatest films ever made. So yeah, you should definitely check out La Seal's work and these, this film and Marketa Lazarova especially. So yeah, that's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, bye.